Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. A pair of tight ends will be on the field today looking to do whatever it takes to give their team an advantage. It's the Browns going up against the Texans. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up with the Cleveland Browns. And welcome again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And, and Larry, he took a moment to highlight the tight ends that we're going to see in this one. I know in our production meeting, we were talking about what we wanted to highlight pregame. And you said tight ends. Why did you say that? Because it can be such a matchup issue for defenses nowadays because these tight ends, they're oversized guys, but they can run as well. So who are you going to cover them with? If you use a traditional linebacker, they're usually going to run past those guys. If you're going to use a smaller corner, maybe they'll be too big. Can a safety match up and run with them and also use enough bulk to keep them from just having their way? So, so many ways that tight ends are used nowadays, they're fun to watch. The Browns rookie Zane Gonzalez ready to get us started. Just about time to rock as Toe gets ready to meet Leather. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Houston Texans taking the field and Deshaun Watson and this offense coming off a huge game. The performance against Tennessee, boy, were they electric. To put it mildly, what did he put up, 57 points? 57 points. That's absolutely phenomenal, but he's showing exactly why many of us, including myself, thought he was the number one college quarterback coming out last year. When you look at his calm, his pocket presence, his ability to elevate his game when the lights are the biggest, very nearly 3-0 and as a starter. And how about that? Only the fifth time in NFL history a rookie quarterback has led his team to 50 or more points in a game. On the ground, this is Lamar Miller. And he'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. So second down, three yards to go now. Let's go! Out of the gun, Watson. And brought down but not before reaching the 45-yard line. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. down carry now for Miller despite the heavy running he'll be hit and drop shy of the 45 just what you want on a first down run call it eight yards and it's second and two you know what really fires up offensive linemen when the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Here we go. They'll run it again with Miller. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. A lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Come on, let's go! Brian 38! Brian 38! 
Now a play fake here on first down. And that's incomplete. Deontay Foreman, the intended target out of the backfield. And now it's second down. And let's look here at the Houston offense. When you think of the Texans, you think this is a team that likes to throw the football. In 2016, though, they weren't very good at it. 29th overall in passing, but they were eighth in rushing. So let's see if they lean on the running game to start this contest. And they're hoping to get more consistency throwing the ball downfield. And on second and 10 now. Here's the rookie from Texas, Deontay Foreman. He chucks him aside. Dumped him. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Hey, 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 hey. Let's go! Hey, hey. They keep it on the ground. This time, it's Miller. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Second down following the run. A shotgun snap for Watson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And here's the starting crew defensively for Cleveland. When you look at Cleveland's defense in 2016, it's pretty easy to isolate where their problems began. 31st in the league against the run. They finished 31st overall in total defense as well. So you have to start with them shutting down teams running the football to give themselves a chance to make some plays in the passing game. Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. From the gun, here's Watson. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. And he'll be out of bounds all the way down at the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Normally when I talk about DeAndre Hopkins, I'm talking about accomplishments. In this case, I'm remembering that he lost nearly 600 yards in receiving from 2015. He even had less than 1,000 last year. Yeah, and his touchdowns dropped from 11 to 4, so now he's hoping for more consistent quarterback play. Come on, let's go! They'll try and run for it with Miller. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. They're mounting a nice drive here. Good chunk of yardage there again. O-line, they've been solid this drive. They have that look about them right now that says, if you do anything but run the ball behind us, you're crazy. They have really moved it well on this drive, and they want to finish it off the same way. Here's Watson. This will be caught at about the six. And he is knocked down from the side. That'll go as a loss of five. And that'll make it third and goal. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area, that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Can this defense get the stop on the opening drive? Here's third and goal. Come on, let's go. Come on, nine, one, now nine, some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. 
They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. A very lengthy opening drive as this will be play number 12 coming on third and goal. From the gun, Watson. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Jamie Collins. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Now the Texans are going to call on the field goal unit. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And it's now 3-0 Texans. So the opening drive for them here on their home turf results in a field goal. And that's the way you want to get things started. Your stadium, your crowd, you've got the ball. Put points on the board first and let everyone start to celebrate. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. They'll be led out by their quarterback, Kevin Hogan, in his second year now out of Stanford. He's a very intriguing prospect, has a nice arm, won a lot of games while he was at Stanford, ended up essentially being a four-year starter, and can move it with his legs pretty well. Had a game last year, 104 yards on the ground. This guy knows how to move the ball. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. And a peek now at the offense for Cleveland. 2016 was a very tough year for Cleveland offensively, but head coach Hugh Jackson, who also handles the play calling, has high hopes for 2017 with a revamped offensive line and his creativity in play calling. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. They'll run it again with Crowell. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. I'd say the staff that's up in the booth watching the game, they may want to file that one away. See how fast the free safety closed to make that play? Might want to check into a throw the next time. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Here we go now. Three and four. Off play action. Hogan. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down, you bring in the nickel package, just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback.
The eighth-year man from Tennessee. This is Britton Colquitt on to punt. Back deep for the Texans, Will Fuller. And we'll see what he can do on the return. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out now joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. And yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. To throw on second is Watson. And a catch made by Hopkins. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Here's Watson from the gun. He'll throw. He finds his target, Fuller. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. After that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Come on, let's go. They go play action here on first down. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. A really good pickup of 28 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. To the air yet again, Watson. And got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Bruce Ellington, a nine yard touchdown grab. And the Texans will add on to their lead. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height, or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get over. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. The drive summary that time, five plays, and it results in the Texans finding the end zone.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. A nice little juke. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. And the Browns getting set to go. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little I bit don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and they out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> They begin with a run by Crowell. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And a look now at the defense for Houston. The Houston Texans in 2016 on defense defied convention. Why? J.J. Watt missed most of the season, so you would expect them to struggle a little bit. But in fact, this was the number one overall defense in the NFL. They stopped the run, forced teams to throw the football, and really got after him with a terrific pass rush. Here we go now. Green, 39. Looking to throw on second down. Hogan. Throw here's incomplete. The intended receiver was Rashard Higgins, and it'll bring up third down. Every time you throw an incompletion, you think, boy, that's a wasted opportunity, don't you? Yeah, because last year they were number two against the pass once this Houston defense. And J.J. Watt is back for all of 2017. They'll be that much stronger. So third and five, third and medium here. Now Hogan, he's got his tight end in Joku, and he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. David and Joku, nearly 17 yards a catch in college. Those are wide receiver numbers. Yeah, went to Miami. Brad Kaya was his quarterback. They were a really good combo. Also, how about the wingspan of the young rookie? 35 and a quarter inch arms. Quarterbacks love that. That catch radius, huge. And what he does after the catch, really impressive. A first down carry now for Crowell. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Career highs in receptions, carries, and total yards last year for Crowell. His total yardage was 952. That was the highest by a Cleveland Brown running back since 2010. And that sounds impressive, but I think there's much more out there for him. If Cleveland plays even with people, not from behind, he'll get more carries, more touches, and his yardage will go up. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, it's Crowell. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. snap we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play 10 zip our score the nfl on ea sports continues right after this message the nfl on ea sports is fueled by gatorade the sports fuel company back with charles davis i'm brandon gauden the browns with a football to begin quarter number two and they've got it here with a first down
They'll run it now out of the gun. He'll get three up to midfield. Second down, here's Crowell. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. First and ten, Hogan. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. scrimmage and no more officially no gain on the play and they're left with a third and eight no gain on that run and while the team is down there's still time to come back and win the football game if i'm the offensive coordinator though i've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more Let's go. on third down hogan Throw left side, caught by the tight end in Joku. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Here's Britton Colquitt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. Now Deshaun Watson and his offense heading back out there. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverage his last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. From the end zone, Watson. And Watson's going to go down in the end zone. It's a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt, and if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love.
And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well. And they free kick it from the 20 now. That's fielded at the 8-yard line. <laughs> Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you've got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? Here's a give to Crowell. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. But we know one thing Isaiah Crowell can run if given an opportunity. Had the longest run in the NFL in 2016, an 85 yard touchdown sprint week two against Baltimore. This one not quite as long, didn't end in six, but still a great game. of a yard there and now second down. But forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. Throw on second down. Hogan. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. Dazzle on third and short. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Hogan. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Let's go! Green 39! Green 39! Now a 
hand off to Crowell. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That was a really nice play, being able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one yard gain. Crowell. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. And now we've got flags down. Looked like one of the Browns might have moved. That was a third and somewhat manageable now, not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt Still like, hey, down. this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you've got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. Hogan now. Screenplay, Johnson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Out is last year's Lou Groza award winner, rookie Zane Gonzalez for the field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And the kick by Gonzalez is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend but don't break approach. But it kept the offense out of the end zone. After the field goal, here's Gonzalez to kick it off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Deshaun Watson of the Texans offense trot back out there. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. First and ten, Watson looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Griffin, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Second down, here's Miller. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. Try to run for it with Miller. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Two yards on the pickup there. It's fourth down. 
from this vantage point, they've got the lead here. So for me, that'd be enough to go ahead and punt the football and let my defense defend the long field. If you go for it, you don't get it, then you really put your defense in a tight spot. Yeah, but we never know what people ultimately will decide to do here on fourth and inches. Here now, Shane Leckler, 41-year-old punter, to kick it away. Jabril Peppers is deep for Cleveland. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And we shift our focus to Isaiah Crowell. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore. Or they get tired or they get out of position or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. You know, Charles, to transition totally for a second here, I'm looking down at the standings of the National Football League right now. There's a few young coaches that are having quite a bit of success early, isn't there? They certainly are, and some of them have taken over established programs like Vance Joseph, right? The Broncos just two years removed from a Super Bowl. Nine and seven last year when Gary Kubiak stepped down. How about the job he's done out of the gate has them three and one. But for guys who are also first time head coach, Sean McDermott in Buffalo, they're leading the AFC East. How about the job he's done in the early going? And Sean McVay has Jared Goff looking like the number one pick in the draft overall. They played awfully well and just won at Dallas this past week. Britt was with the Rams last year, of course. Hit the 1,000-yard mark for the first time in his career. Maybe starting to figure things out a little bit now. Has to be a number one receiver in Cleveland who allowed Terrell Pryor to move on to Washington. Taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Let's go! Three, 19. Looking to throw on second down. Hogan. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The Browns on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and six. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Operating from the gun. Hogan. And Ty finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football. And he's taken down. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, They'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Houston after this timeout.
We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And did he put that on a dime? He did. Wow. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They begin with a run by Miller. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. Sometimes you get just a little overeager defensively when you get people backed up because the mentality is to attack, take the ball away, or at worst, just keep them backed up there for your own offense. They actually used their aggressiveness against him on that one and hit him big. Absolutely. Had him pinned on the two. Not anymore. Watson on first down. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Hey, that gives us a chance, by the way, to play Charles' biggest surprises at the quarter mark of the NFL season. Take it away. All right, let's stay in the AFC, okay? Because I'm going to say the Buffalo Bills. Three and one, leading the AFC East. Rookie head coach and Sean McDermott, they're doing a fantastic job in the early going. The AFC West, I don't call it a surprise at all. We knew it would be a monster. It absolutely is. And right now, Kansas City leading at 4-0. Denver 3-1. Oakland, we all thought they might win this thing. They're 2-2 two and two and just lost their quarterback for maybe an extended period of time. But how about the surprise of all surprises, Brandon? The New York Jets are 2-2. Two and two, 500. Not 0-4. Oh we all thought that the next week or this week coming up when they played the Cleveland Browns, it might be the 0-0 oh oh bowl. <laughs> Instead, the Jets have two wins and looking to add a third. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. on the catch there brings up second down I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine when I see a big man like that make a catch all I keep thinking to myself is big man with football <laughs> look out everyone he may not juke you a whole lot right he may not run past you because of his size you talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range but boy once he gets his mitts on the ball he's gonna be tough to bring down second and five Watson looks to throw again. Griffin's got it, middle of the field. And now prior to this third and one, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one.
And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. The Texans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Again, it's Watson. And he's got Miller. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree. One thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. for Miller. Now Watson. Throw left side complete. It's Griffin. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaud alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment, defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice, an ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. remaining. That time they were looking for the former Auburn Tiger, Ricardo Lewis. And that'll bring up second down. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. You gotta be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. Throwing again on second and ten. Hogan. And he's gonna go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout.
So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. The Browns on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and 17. Let's go! Three, 19. Three, 19. The final shot before break. Hogan. And this is going to be incomplete. So we've come upon halftime here in Houston, and it's the home team, the Texans, leading this one. As we send you on over to Orlando, where we'll check in with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Texans are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Browns didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. Here we go, let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. Now first and 10, defense is gonna come away with the sack. This ends up with a short loss in yardage. This cuts the deficit to eight. Browns now late in the second. Offensive line won't be able to hold up here. This goes for a loss of nine. Staying late in the half. Defense will get to the QB here. This ends up as a loss of seven. So that's it for us. We'll go back now to Houston for the start of the second half. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Second half begins with a run by Crowell. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Nine yards still remaining here to pick up the first on second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup, and now they've got a third down and eight. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Browns on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and eight. Play action. Hogan. And that is incomplete. Here's Britton Colquitt now. He's been terrific so far. Average.
averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, Let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We've got, de got, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, it's Miller. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. He lost two there, and it's third down. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. The Texans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 11. Watson off play action and that's complete it's Ellington they showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down they'll get 10 there but it leaves them just short for fourth down a short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation really nice job defensively they knew where the sticks were they got the stop before it here's Shane Leckler now as he'll kick it away for the second time This is taken around the 12. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the side puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep him warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. up over the 25 to the 26. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Second down following the run. Try the right side with Corral. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. They'll try to run for it with Corral. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out.
So it'll be first down here after the run. Now Johnson. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, it's Johnson. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Pretty shifty footwork, but didn't buy him much. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive, and like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Third down, Johnson. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. And here comes play number six on this drive. Throwing on first down. Hogan, and it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, that pass being off the mark, Charles, gives me a chance to get your NFC surprises so far in the season. I'm sure the Rams being at 3-1 and one is at the top of the list. I concur. There's no doubt about it. Leading the NFC West, Sean McVay, 31 years old, younger than you. How about that? <laughs> he is. Leading the team, and they're playing really well for the young coach right now. I would say let's welcome back the Carolina Panthers. 6-10 yeah. and 10 last year after a Super Bowl season the year before. They went to New England and beat the defending Super Bowl champions with a field goal late. Really impressive start for the Panthers. And last but not least, whoever thought we'd live in a world in 2017 where the New York Jets <laughs> were 2-2 two and two and dominating the headlines in that city, and the New York Giants Jets. are 0-4. Yeah. Didn't see that coming. The Browns on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This time it's third and three. Here we go now. Green, 39. This is Crowell, able to get away. That's why I keep the legs checked. Isaiah Crowell, he's all alone. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Isaiah Crowell, 52 yards. And the Browns were able to cash in for six. Well, they were just hoping that run would pick up the first. They got the whole enchilada. And I'm so used to teams on third down, doesn't matter how far they need for a first down, throwing the ball. Instead, they run it, and as you said, picked up the first down, and then some, and then some. <laughs> in fact, everything, all the way for a touchdown. Terrific play. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. Back to throw. Hogan. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Zach Cunningham with a pick. He's got the lane, and there he goes. The 40. He's at the 30. 20, 10, and he takes it all the way back. It's a pick two, if you will, as head play backfires in a big way. Well, that was almost a four-point swing. The interception, if he had returned it all the way, would have been two for them, but just a little bit shy. And when it's a play like that, you're exactly right with the math. But don't you feel like it would have counted for more if they found their way all the way back to the end zone and gotten the two? That changes the whole momentum, doesn't it?
Gonzalez now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And we focus on Lamar Miller as he heads back out there and gets set to go again on offense. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him, maybe the guys up front, combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Come on, let's go! Try and 38! Try and They'll try and get the run game going. This is Miller. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Second down, here's Watson. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target, and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. The Texans on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and seven. Here we go. To throw is Watson. Operating from the gun. Caught left side Hopkins. A really nice gain of 25 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up the first down. And now a first down following that long game. Making the give. Now Watson. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. 23 yards on the play. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge 6'6 target that they've got in him. They really do, and it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. A first down carry now for Miller. Quick move by Miller. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Out of the gun, Watson fighting through pressure. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Hopkins, and he's brought down. 12 more yards there, and another first down. And here we go on first and goal. They'll try to punch it in with Miller. And he'll 
actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. We all know that Miles Garrett was drafted number one in the NFL for his ability to get to the quarterback. That's his stock in trade. But the underrated part of his game plays well against the run, knows how to hold the point of attack. Second and goal to go now. And they'll give Miller another crack. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. Come on, let's go. Watson. From the gun, Watson. And this will be a touchdown. Deshaun Watson, his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Texans will extend their lead. As a former defender, I would be angry as well. Could not get off the field. Well-executed offensive drive. No matter what the defense tried, they couldn't stop them. After try forthcoming. And with that, the lead is up to eight. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's finished off with a five yard touchdown run. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. Runs through the contact. It's the third quarter. They're down on the scoreboard. Oh, well, no one wants to hit the panic button just yet. Points are a necessity on this drive. What a great way to get set up. Set to go here, Isaiah Crowell in the offense, trot back out there. And you see the last drive, great chunky yardage, the touchdown on five carries. And offensively, everything just looked in sync, didn't it? It did, and, and the reason that it was in sync is because it's a combination of play calling, game plan, offensive line marrying up with all of their blocks. But don't forget the receivers out on the perimeter. Any type of a long run, the receivers have had a hand in that because they've occupied people downfield. And of course, give the big credit to the man with the football. Great vision, good movement, gets to the end zone. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to be out of bounds down near the 35-yard line. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Now the offense lining up first and ten. On the run, it's Crowell. <laughs> And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11-yard pickup. 
Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at the home of Super Bowl 51, NRG Stadium in Houston. It's the Browns with a deficit they're trailing, but with the football here to start the fourth. Hogan looking for the end zone. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Ricardo Lewis, 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Browns move back within a couple of the lead. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. All right, here we go. Looking to throw. Hogan. That's caught at the one. And he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. Still time to work with on the clock, but they wanted the tie now, and they got it. And I love their aggressiveness. Go ahead and get it done. Get the game tied. Now your team has the momentum, and you're staring across the field saying, let's see if you can match us. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. And now out comes Houston. And that last drive, a long drive. But not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Miller will get it. He has been busy today. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. He was looking there for Bruce Ellington. And now it's third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline. But do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. Here's Watson. And he comes back with one complete. 
And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Watson going to give this one to Miller. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Second down following the run. From the gun, here's Watson. Throw left side complete. That's Hopkins. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people will call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Let's go! Brian, 38! A shotgun snap for Watson. Wide open receiver complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Now a first down throw, Watson. Called in by Anderson, left side. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 more on that one and another first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So the offense has it first and 10. Here we go. Brian, 38. From the red zone now, Watson. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. Ten yards still left on second down. And movement here by one of the Texans up front. In comes the flag. False start, offense. After the penalty, it's Miller. And able to work his way down to the 16. 
They get eight yards back there. They could use another one of those now on third and seven. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. The Texans on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and seven. Watson hands this to Foreman. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. A great play there. A 16-yard touchdown run. And the Texans have taken the lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. On the return, Jabril Peppers. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. and 10. Hogan. Sammy Coates has it complete. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. down Hogan and unable to connect on the long pass it falls down incomplete sure that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield but that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly second down here after the incomplete pass Going again, Hogan. And he's got room and avoids the contact by sliding. It's an eight yard pickup and they're gonna have a third down. The Browns on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. Here it's third and two. 
They'll run with Crowell. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Operating from the gun. Hogan got his man complete over the middle. That's Higgins. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. here on first down that is caught at the seven and he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field holding offense that's on the guard Kevin Zeitler first round pick back in 2012 And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. Rare penalty for Joe Thomas, a multiple-time pro bowler at left tackle. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll make this a second and long. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. To throw on second down. Hogan, throw right side, complete to Williams. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. The reception good for seven. It's third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Here we go now. Green, and now we've got flags down. Looked like one of the Browns might have moved. Offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Now Hogan. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again.
Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. Play fake, and it's Watson. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Fuller. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He got 29 yards that time. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now it's Watson. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Here we go. Brad 38. Brad 38. Throwing again is Watson. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Another incompletion would certainly be ideal defensively. A big play now. This is third and ten. To the air yet again, Watson. The catch made by Miller. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. Texas passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. So they're leading. They have possession of the football, and certainly this is where they just want to milk the clock. They'll run it now out of the gun. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Let's go. 
Watson on first down. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. adjustment there finally gained a measure of I don't even know if you call it revenge but got a play done against him and that's been difficult for them all game long Kevin Hogan getting ready to go again here on offense I would imagine you want to win every game big but if you're a quarterback in the NFL this is the spot that you love you've been dreaming of it since you were a kid playing in the backyard or the front yard wherever where you went through those imaginary situations now it's real though what practice have you put in since the OTAs, the mini camps, preseason camp, sequence of plays, get the ball to the outside, get it out of bounds, save your timeouts, move the ball downfield to get your team in a position to win the game. And a field goal, of course, no good. They need a score. Back to throw. Caught here left side by Brad. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. He's back to throw. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Three yards left to grab here on third down. They'll look to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. He'll look to throw. Over the middle here to Coates. A really good pickup of 28 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. Coverage was very good that time. A nice job to smother him as the ball arrived, and that ensured an incomplete pass. And it keeps six points off the board. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green. Back to the air on second down. Hogan, and he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Bernardrick McKinney in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. And now we've got flags now. Looked like one of the Browns might have moved. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise. They're in the dime. 
Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone infractions. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. Some one more chance here on fourth down. They took their shot for the end zone, almost cost them. And he made the right play there, knocking it away. But boy, it looked like he had a chance to come down with the football. If he does that, this thing is over. Instead, he leaves them out there with another chance. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Texans are going to win the football game. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there. But for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator. But how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The Texans on third down. They've had plenty of success. Eight conversions, looking for a ninth. This is going to be third and 13. Here we go. go down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll. Here's Shane Leckler now as he's on to punt for Houston. He 
And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaud. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.